when nobody else cared and you sent your son Jesus and Jesus you were willing to come that I might be free and set free from the bondage of sin and we have come into your house and gathered together to bless your name and Lord to receive what you have for us and give out to others when we leave here accept our worship of you this morning in the name of Jesus we pray. Let's worship him together. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. It's nothing but the blood of Jesus. For my pardon, this I see. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. For my cleansing, this I plead, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Singing, oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other found I know, it's nothing but the blood of Jesus. Nothing can for sin atone, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Not of good that I have done, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No. Other found I know it's nothing but the blood of Jesus. This is all my hope and peace. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. This is all my righteousness. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Singing oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other found I know. It's nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? It's nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. Oh, no other found I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus singing, oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other found I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. This is all my hope and peace. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. This is all my righteousness. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other found I know. It's nothing but the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. It's nothing but that precious blood of Jesus that can atone for my sin. And that blood still prevails today. Hallelujah. 
The blood prevails, the blood prevails, just like it did in the olden days. No matter what the people say, the blood prevails, the blood prevails. Thank God the blood prevails, the blood prevails, the blood prevails. Just like it did in the olden days, no matter what the people say, the blood prevails, the blood prevails. Thank God the blood prevails. This is a glorious church without spot or wrinkle and is washed in the blood of the Lamb. This is a glorious church without spot or wrinkle and it's washed in the blood of the Lamb. The blood prevails, the blood prevails, just like it did in the olden days. No matter what the people say, the blood prevails, the blood prevails. Thank God the blood prevails. This is a holy church, a sanctified church, and it's washed in the blood of the Lamb. This is a holy church, a sanctified church, and it's washed in the blood of the Lamb. The blood prevails, the blood prevails. Just like it did in the olden days, no matter what the people say, the blood prevails, the blood prevails. Thank God the blood prevails, the blood prevails, the blood prevails. Just like it did in the olden days, no matter what the people say, the blood prevails, the blood prevails. Thank God the blood prevails. Alive, alive, alive forevermore. My Jesus is alive, alive forevermore. Alive, alive, alive forevermore. Thank God the blood prevails. Alive, alive, alive forevermore. My Jesus is alive, alive forevermore. Alive, alive, alive forevermore. Thank God the blood prevails. The blood prevails, the blood prevails. Just like it did in the olden days, no matter what the people say, the blood prevails, the blood prevails. Thank God the blood prevails. This is a holy church, a sanctified church, and it's washed in the blood of the Lamb. This is a holy church, a sanctified church, and it's washed in the blood of the Lamb. Alive, alive, alive forevermore. My Jesus is alive, alive forevermore. Alive, alive, alive forevermore. Thank God the blood prevails. Alive, alive, alive forevermore. My Jesus is alive, alive forevermore. Alive, alive, alive forevermore. Thank God the blood prevails. Now, I don't know about you that excitement when it said he's alive. You know, others is dead, but Jesus is still alive. And whatever you need this morning, he's alive and it's standing at the Father's right hand and willing to hear our prayer and fulfill our needs. Do you really? Are, is that excited? They thought they killed him. As Brother Brandon uh, uh, taught this morning about the uh, death, they thought they killed him. But his body never seen the corruption because he rose again. I want us to sing that again. I, that just kind of got in my spirit and excitement. 
that as I walk through this uh, uh, valley of life today and the burdens and the trials and the things that comes my way and right, one writer said they're just common among us. These are common things that we're going to encounter. But I don't have to encounter him alone because he's alive. And he'll walk beside me. And when I'm not able to walk, he will take me up in his arms and carry me through. And as it excites me that he is still alive forevermore. Let's worship him and sing that. Let that excite you. Tell you, whatever you're going through, you're not going through it alone alive, because he's still alive, with you. Alive, alive forevermore. My Jesus is alive, alive forevermore. Alive, alive, alive forevermore. Thank God the blood prevails. Alive, alive, alive forevermore. My Jesus is alive, alive forevermore. Alive, alive, alive forevermore. Thank God the blood prevails. Alive, alive, alive forevermore. My Jesus is alive, alive forevermore. Alive, alive, alive forevermore. Thank God the blood prevails. He is alive, hallelujah. My King is alive today, and He is here among us in this place, and He is worthy. Have you come to worship the Lord this morning? Hallelujah. Thank Him for that cross, for that nailed, nailed pierced hands, and for the shame that He had to bear on that cross so that we could live with Him in glory. Thank you for the cross, Lord. Thank you for the price you paid, bearing all my sin and shame. In love you came and gave amazing grace. Thank you for this love, Lord. Thank you for the nail-pierced hands that wash me in your cleansing flow. Now all I know is your forgiveness and embrace. Worthy is the Lamb Seated on the throne We crown you now with many crowns You reign victorious High and lifted up Jesus, Son of God The darling of heaven crucified Worthy is the Lamb Worthy is the Thank you for the cross, Lord. Thank you for the price you paid, bearing all my sin and shame. In love you came and gave amazing grace. Thank you for this love, Lord. Thank you for the nail 
will pierce hands that wash me in your cleansing flow now all i know is your forgiveness and embrace worthy is the lamb seated on the throne we crown you now with me God, the darling of heaven crucified, worthy is the Lamb, worthy is the Lamb, worthy is the Lamb. For the price you paid, bearing all my sin and shame, in love you came and gave amazing grace. Thank you for this love, Lord. Thank you for the nail pierced hands that wash me in your cleansing flow. Now all I know is your forgiveness and embrace. Worthy is the Lamb. See throne we crown you now with many crowns you reign victorious you're high and lifted up Jesus son of God darling of heaven crucified worthy is the lamb worthy is the lamb let's raise our hands and thank him father I'm so thankful hallelujah Lord, that you loved me when I was unlovable. Lord, I'm thankful. Father, that you loved your creation so much. Even after the fall, Lord, that Adam and Eve, Lord, turned their backs and walked away from your truth. Yet you loved me even while I was in sin. And you had compassion on me. 
and you sent Jesus and Jesus you're willing to come worthy is the lamb to receive honor and praise and glory worthy is his name in the name of Jesus I thank you Lord in the name of Jesus amen amen he is worthy of all our praise would you take someone by the hand and bring them right on up to the choir as Brother Roger will come and lead us. Would you just take him by the hand and say, come on up and let's continue this worship. Join with us as we worship together. In your hymnals, page 390, we're talking about Jesus, the blood, and all what he done. The song says there's power in the blood. I said there's power in the blood of the Lamb. Let's worship. Hold on, Sister Cherith. I've got to obey God. I may have to answer to someone else later, but I've got to obey God. Listen, how many of you know this is a spiritual hospital? How many of you know that along with the healing of our spirit, he also suffered all those stripes for the healing of our body? Now, Brother Hanks, there is no way I can let you sit one more minute in this service telling me that you're only 60%. And then expect you to minister to me tonight. He's scheduled to preach to us tonight. Now listen. God sends everything to teach us. He hasn't been sick just for nothing. But God promises for those who are called. And according to his purpose. It's for his good. And ours too. Now sometimes you might forget how he sacrifices for his ministry. If you ever go. With him you won't forget. You'll remember. And I remember this morning. And I know where he's at. See I got sick over there too when I went. Mine only lasted one day. He said he suffered for 12 days now. Brother Hanks you got to come up here. And I don't want you to come if you don't believe that God can 100% heal him this morning. If you don't think that God can heal him, stay in your seat, please. But if you believe, I want you to come and help me anoint Pastor Hanks. See, God is able. He didn't tell us in his word to seek a doctor. And he didn't tell us in his word to seek the medicine bottle. But what did he tell us to do? Brother Renfro, what did the Lord tell us to do in Scripture? Seek his face. He said, if you'll call the elders, and they will lay on hands and anoint you with oil, that he will heal. Now, I believe that this morning, and I hope you do too. So we just got to stop what we're doing with the ritual here, and we got to get down to business with God to do some healing and showing, because he is real. This is that we talk about every week. is not just something that we just talk about. Sometimes it has to be proved. Brother Brendan did a wonderful job this morning teaching a prophecy that's proved. 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 God says prove him and he will show us what he can do. Let's prove him this morning.
Hallelujah. Somebody else needs prayed. Right here. Hallelujah, hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Blessed be your name, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lord, just help my unbelief. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I bless you and I bless you. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. The Lord, your word says. Lord, I didn't say it, but your word says that by his stripes we're healed. Lord, man didn't say that. You said that. And we claim those stripes. We claim those stripes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Bless the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, just to flow in your spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. 
Hallelujah, Thank you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Bless the Lord, bless the Lord, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, bless the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Bless the Lord, bless the Lord. I praise your name, Lord. I praise your name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord, in the name of Jesus, as it touches, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we thank you for your faithfulness, Lord, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Thank you, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Choir, come on back. We're just being obedient to the Lord. I want you to hear me on this. And some of you might not agree with me. That's fine. You don't have to plead with the Lord for healing. You don't have to beg for healing because it's already been provided. What we have to do is to believe His Word. And I think about it and speak His Word. Be healed in the name of Jesus. I think about the time when Lazarus, everybody, four days late, Jesus was coming to Lazarus. But all he done was Lazarus come forth. He didn't have to beg the Father. He didn't have to plead with the Father. And when he called Lazarus out, Lazarus come walking. Whatever your healing you need, 
speak the word then after you speak the word here's the key you've got to walk in the word amen because there's power in the blood of the lamb
How many believe the healing took place this morning? I do, because there's power in the blood of the Lamb. Amen, amen. Do we have any first-time guests? Any first time you've ever been here? We've got one right back here. We welcome you this morning, and uh, we're glad to have you and your children, but we want to have give you something on the way out this morning as you leave. We'll all have a say thank you for coming and sharing your time with us this morning. A little bit of our announcements. Uh, first things have, uh, if you watch any TV or anything, you know, if they got a special show coming up, they always have previews, you know, get you interested, make sure you tune in. Tonight, we're going to have a preview. We've got a pastor, evangelist, and a missionary that's going to preview. You're going to have a special preview showing of camp meeting that's coming up the 3rd of August. And Bishop Hanks will be preaching this evening. So you're going to have a preview of what camp meeting is going to be like. So be sure to be here at 530 for our prayer time and uh, our service this evening. Then also Wednesday uh, evening at uh, 7 o'clock, our regular Wednesday night service. Let's not uh, forget to be here and all that's going on. A lot of things happening. Summer is running, uh, going down. It won't be long. School will be starting in a few weeks. A lot is happening. So let's be a part of it. And I know God will bless you as we do ministry throughout our community. We want to continue our worship now as we uh, worship the Lord with our tithe and with our giving, giving back the first fruits uh, that we have uh, earned and the Lord has blessed us with as we worship him with our giving. So uh, at this time, if you worship the Lord with your giving, our ushers will serve you from the rear. Father, we're so thankful for this opportunity that we can return your tithe to you and give a special love gifts above that. Accept these gifts, Lord, that we have given back to you, Lord. Bless the kingdom, Lord, as it reaches out through this world. God, we give you praise and we give you honor. In the name of Jesus, amen and amen. One other announcement that I failed to mention was if you'll notice in your bulletin, my wife and I will be celebrating coming up our 50th uh, anniversary, and we've invited those uh, of the church to be a part of that. Only thing that we ask, if you please will sign up on the back there so we will know how many bologna sandwiches to fix. No, but... Uh, we, we, we need to know uh, as that uh, so we can prepare the food uh, for that. So if you are going to try to come, it will be at the, the Vineland Road Christian Fellowship uh, Church at their fellowship hall. We uh, invite you, and, but please sign up, and uh, that way our kids will know what, how to prepare in that. And I appreciate it, and we do invite you all in. I have to say, for 53 years, 
here in a few weeks uh, that I have been blessed to be married to the woman that I married. We dated three years till she finally convinced me to marry her, and then we've been married uh, 50 years next month. So please come and, and share in our celebration. Let's continue our worship as Sister Mercer comes and worships, leads us in worship. I'd just like to thank the Lord for being here this morning and uh, giving me an opportunity to do something for him. He counts the stars, one and all. He knows how much sand is on the shore. He sees every sparrow that falls. He made the mountains and the seas. He's in control of everything, of all the creatures great and small. And he knows my name. Every step that I take, every move that I make, every tear that I cry. And he knows my name when I'm overwhelmed by the pain. I can't see the light of day and I know I'll be just fine because he knows my name. Don't know what tomorrow may bring. I can't tell you what's in store. I don't know a lot of things. I don't have all the answers to the questions of life. But I know in whom I have believed. Cause he knows my name. Every step that I take, every move that I make, and every tear that I cry. And he knows my name when I'm overwhelmed by the pain. I can't see the light of day, and I know I'll be just fine, because he knows my name. the stars one and all he knows how much sand is on the shore he sees every sparrow that falls he made the mountains and the seas he's in control of everything of all the creatures great and small because he knows my name and every step that I take and every move that I make and every tear that I cry and he knows my name when I'm overwhelmed by the pain I can't see the light of day and I know I'll be just fine cause he knows my name what's in store I don't know a lot of things I don't have all the answers to the questions of life but I know in whom I have believed cause he knows my name every step that I take every move that I make every tear that I cry and he knows my name when I'm overwhelmed by the pain I can't see the light of day and I know I'll be just fine cause he knows my name
Aren't you glad he knows our name? Our lead pastor is over in Jamaica ministering, preaching, and having a time I know over there. So that's where he's at. But uh, our uh, pastor, Ricky Faircloth, I want you to give your attention to him as our pastor comes and ministers and gives us what God has for us. Pastor Ricky. Praise the Lord. Let's open our Bibles today to Psalms. I want to look at a, one of the probably most popular Psalms in the Bible, uh, Psalms 23. I've been praying this week and asking the Lord what to minister, and this scripture here kept coming to my mind, and my heart kept coming back to it. So this is what the Lord wants us to hear this morning. Let us pray first. Father, Lord, we thank you for the anointing of the Holy Ghost that's in this house already. Thank you for the healer that's in the house. For by your stripes we are healed, and Lord, we thank you for the healing. Father, Lord, we thank you for the teacher that's been in the house already in Sunday school, as Brendan told us, Lord. Father, Lord, we ask that your teacher would come again right now and teach. The preacher would come and preach, O Holy Ghost. Let me just be a willing and obedient vessel for your Holy Spirit to flow through the things that you put into my heart and the things that you put into my life, Lord. I pray today that you would let it come out today. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Psalms 23. Stand with me as we read it, and then we'll discuss it a little bit. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Verse 2. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Amen. God bless the reading of his word today. Amen. You may be seated. Verse number one says, The Lord is my shepherd. That's what I want to talk to you a few minutes about today is the Lord is my shepherd. We know that David wrote, wrote this psalm, but the time that he wrote it is not really known. He could have wrote it while, as he was a shepherd boy, or he could have wrote it while he was a king. Or we do not know. And I believe through the, uh, my thought is that he wrote it when he was a king. Through the time in his heart, the time in his life uh, when he was great success and things happened in his life. He had weaknesses, he had problems, he had failures, he had difficulties. In our hearts and our lives, we have difficulties, we have problems, we have failures. But aren't you glad the Lord Jesus Christ is always there with us? He never leaves us, he never forsakes us, he is there with us. So as he's writing this, he says, the Lord is my shepherd. So we're looking at this, he says, shepherd. When you must think about it is that the, David started his life out as a shepherd boy. His job was tending his father's sheep and taking care of the sheep so he knew what it was all about as a shepherd. But I believe that he wrote this during the time when he was a king, when he was great success in his heart, great success in his life. But his mind was going back to when he was a shepherd boy. When he was tending the sheep, Jesus Christ, the Bible says that Jesus Christ was a slain lamb that, that was shed before the foundation of the earth. I want you to watch this and listen to me today. We see that David was a king and he's going back to where he was a shepherd boy. Jesus Christ came into the world. They thought he came into the world to be a king, but he came to, into this world to be a shepherd, to be a sheep, to lay down his life for the sheep. He came to give his life a ransom that we might have life and have it more abundantly. And this is what King David is going back to. He's going back to the 
time when he was a shepherd boy and when he was tending the sheep. You remember when he was tending the sheep, the things that happened? There was a bear came. And he tried to take some of the sheep away and he fought the bear and he killed it. There was a lion came that tried to destroy the lamb. He went and got it and he destroyed it. And then you remember the next thing that happened? There was a David and Goliath. There was a king that lay Goliath that was making fun of the children of Israel. And he could not stand for this. He made him mad. He was just a little boy, just a young lad. But when he went down there to bring food to his brothers who was in the military, and he seen this, the, this king, this Goliath, this big man going against uh, Israel and all the Israel stood for, it made him mad. And he, it made him mad. And he went back and he told, told the king Samuel. He said, I was a shepherd. And when the lion came to destroy my sheep, I fought it and I killed it and I took my lamb back. A bear came and I fought it and I destroyed it and I took my lamb. He said, this giant there over there is no different than the bear. It's no different for the lion because I do not come in my own strength. I do not come in my own power, but I come in the name of the Lord. And he tried, saw, Saul tried to put his armor on him, tried to put his helmet on him, tried to put everything on him, but Saul, David said, I do not need no armor does not feed me. All I need is the power of God and the anointing of God in my heart and in my life and I will destroy that devil, destroy that Goliath in the name of Jesus. He goes there against the Goliath and he says I come unto you in the name of the Lord and he picks up that rock and he slings it and Goliath was over there laughing at him and saying who is this? Who do they think they are sending me this little young boy? He said I just one thing I know I come to you in the name of the Lord. He slung that rock hit him right between the eye, eyes and knocked him out and killed him. He took the sword and his own sword he cuts his head off. But you know what? This is what King David is going back to. He's going back. He's a king. He's had difficulties in his heart. He has difficulties in his life. He had situations and failures. But he come to the king and he come in the point. Remember that the, the Ark of the Covenant was taken out of Israel. And it was coming back into the Israel. What did King David do? He went before the ark and he danced before the Lord with all of his might because the presence of the Lord was coming back into the children of Israel. And this was also a picture of the presence of the Lord coming back into David's life because he had mistakes, he had weaknesses and failures, but he realized that I need Jesus. I need God in my heart and I need God in my life because God is my source and God is is my strength and he's going this and he said the Lord is my shepherd the Lord is my shepherd he's going back to now to the time when he was a shepherd he was remembering how that he used to tend the sheep I used to make sure that they had plenty of grass and they had plenty of water and he would defend them and protect them and he would keep his hand of God upon them and he was going back to it. And he said, the Lord is my shepherd. What was he doing? He was going back to the place where he was a shepherd, but he was a king. And he's putting himself in the place of what he had. He was a shepherd mending the sheep what he was saying is though I'm the king I am nothing without the Lord Jesus Christ I am nothing without God in my heart in my life and I must present myself to God as me being a sheep and the Lord being my shepherd you know as you look at the sheep the sheep is one of the dumbest animals there is they're ridiculous and King David is saying I am a dumb sheep. I am as a lamb. I need the sheep. I need the great shepherd leading me and guiding me and directing me. And this is what I need in my heart and my life. So he said, the Lord is my shepherd. He come to him as a sheep. Realize that he was lost without God. And what we must realize in our heart and our life today, we are sheep. We need a savior. 
We need a shepherd. And that shepherd's name is Jesus. Jesus said, uh, uh, Pastor, last week, Pastor Renfro gave us a good definition of the name of what God was. Remember, he said, I am. In the New Testament, Jesus Christ picks that up. And he says, I am the good shepherd of the sheep. I lay down my life for the sheep. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. I am the great things of God. He says, I am the true divine. I am, the, I am, the, of the, I am not of this world. He says, I am a fr- from above. I am in God. He said, I am these things. And what he was doing, he's picking up. He said, I am. The disciples, the Pharisees and the Sadducees and all them asked him, he said, are you greater than Abraham? He said, before Abraham was, I am. He's the great I am. He's the all-sufficient God, the almighty God. And what David was going back to, he was going back to this and letting him know that I need the shepherd, the great I am, the all-sufficient God, the almighty God. But what does he do? He says, the Lord is my shepherd. The first thing he realized is, Lord. He didn't say, God is my shepherd. He said, the Lord is my shepherd. What he was letting us know, it's not just any God. It's not plural gods. It's not any God, but it's the God. It's the Lord. If you go into the Hebrew and you look at this definition of the word, the, the word Lord here that is used here, we can see that it's one that it means the eternal one, the pre-existence one, the existence of eternal. And what he was going back to is David, and as he's picking out the words for this, he said, through the power of the Holy Spirit leading him and guiding him, he says, the Lord is my shepherd. Watch this. He said, the pre-eternal God, the one that created the heavens and the earth, the one that formed it all in existence, uh, the one that spoke these things. uh, He said, this Lord, the pre-eternal God, the pre-existent God, the one that was before everything happened, the great I am, this is the one, the Lord. He didn't say just God. He said, the Lord. It's not Buddha, it's not Muhammad, it's not Allah, it's not all of these other religions. King David is telling us it's the Lord. The Lord, the great I am, the pre-eternal God, the all-existent God, the all-knowing God, the all-powerful God. He is Jehovah Rapha, the Lord is my shepherd. He's Jehovah Jireh, the Lord is my provider. He's Jehovah Shalom, the Lord is our peace. He's Jehovah Rapha, the Lord our healer. He is Jehovah Tzikhanu, the Lord our righteous. And today, today, David is going back to saying, the Lord is my shepherd. But as you look at this, we see that he's going back to when he was a shepherd boy and he puts himself into the place of being a sheep. And he realizes that uh, it's the Lord. It's not none of the other gods. And remember when the, uh, the Ark of the Covenant was taken into the land of the Philistines, they put it up before Dagon? What happened? It fell over and it broke. They put it back together and put it back up. The next day it fell over and broke. King David was going back to saying this. All them other gods doesn't make any difference. It's the one true God. It's the pre-eternal God. The pre-existent God. The one that created all the heavens and the earth. He is the Lord. And he says, this is the shepherd. But watch this. In our hearts and our lives, there must be a time in our heart and our life that we realize this next phrase that he says. He says, the Lord shepherd. But what does this have in the middle of it? He says, the Lord is my shepherd. The word is, the is is an affirmative. It's an affinity. It's one that means, he said, it's a fact. It's the truth. He doesn't say the Lord might be my shepherd. He did not say the Lord shall be my shepherd. He says the Lord is my shepherd. And in your hearts and your lives today, there must come a time in your heart and your life where you say the Lord is my shepherd. You don't ever come to the point in your life where you can say the Lord is, you're in trouble. 
Not only did he say the Lord is all eternal and all powerful in all of this, but he said the Lord is my shepherd. I want you to know today the God that we serve is a personal God that wants a personal relationship. Understand that. God created Adam and Eve in the garden, and what did he do? He would come down and talk with them and fellowship with them at the cool of the day. This is what man created, God created man for, was to have fellowship with him. And David was going back to this and said, The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. There must come a time in your heart and your life. If you want all everything else that the scripture says after it, you must have this in your heart, in your this in your life. Watch this. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. If you do not have the Lord Jesus Christ as your shepherd, this does not apply to you. This is what King David is saying. He said, I realized through all of my life, I was a shepherd boy. I depended upon God. I depended on the power of the Holy Spirit. He was with me when I defeated the bear. He was with me when I defeated the lion. He was with me when I defeated the giants. He was with me when I fought all of the battles that I fought. He was with me, and then there was a time when he stayed out of Bible, out of the battle, and he got in trouble. But what he was saying is, I realized... That I need the Lord Jesus Christ in my heart, and without Him I am nothing. And He says, I realize this, so if I have this, I shall not want. Shall not want any good thing. I want you to listen to me today. I don't care if you've been coming in this church for 50 years. I don't care if you've been coming here for a week. If you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, you cannot apply this scripture to your heart and to your life. If you have not ever accepted him in your personal Savior and put your, your life and your heart into that slain lamb that was slain from the foundation of the world, Jesus came to lay down his life for the sheep. And Paul, David was saying, I am one of them sheep. I, I am lost. I am without him. I need God. Today you need God. If you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior today, listen to me. You need God. And you need to ask the Lord to forgive you for your sins and repent from all of your unrighteousness and ask the Lord to help you and strengthen you. This is what David was doing, going back to what he had. Going back to where he was. You may be in here today and maybe you become cold and indifferent. Maybe you're not as close to the Lord as you used to be. Maybe you're not where you used to be at one time with the Lord. Maybe you've let some things creep in, some things that shouldn't be there creep in. King David is saying to you today, go back to the great shepherd, the all-eternal God, the Lord, and have him be your shepherd and make him personal in your heart and personal in your life and lay down to him the slain lamb that was slain and accept him and fall back to him and he will not ever forsake you. Listen to this. I shall not want. The Lord is my shepherd. If the Lord is your shepherd, you shall not. The Lord said that he said, my God shall supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory. This is Paul was writing this. My God shall supply all of your needs. Jesus was talking to the disciples and he said, why do you worry about anything? Do you not see the, the birds of the air and the, uh, the grass of the, everything it was provided for? Why do you worry? In our hearts and our lives, we must get back to where we have full reliance upon God and we believe in Him and we trust in Him. We have faith in Him to know that if I put my trust in Him, I shall not want. Listen to this. He says, He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still water. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. The shepherd taking his sheep to the green pastures and to the still waters. What is it? You're providing them food. 
providing them water. Jesus said, I am the manna from heaven. I am living waters. I am and what we can see here is a picture is that he makes us to lie down in the green pastures and he leadeth me beside the still waters. This old king, this king is saying, you've got to have the word of God. You've got to have Jesus You've got to have the manna. You've got to have the water. And he, the great shepherd takes us to where it's at. He supplies. Hurrying. He restoreth my soul. Aren't you glad that God restores? Are you weak? Are you tired? Are you very heavy laden? He restores you today. Jesus said, Come unto me, all you that are weary and heavy and laden, and I will give you rest. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of wrongness for his name's sake. Is that what it said? Listen to this. He, leads, he restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of the world for his name's sake. He leads me into the paths of the ungodly and sinners for his name's sake. He says that he leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. In this Old Testament, Psalms, we see that the pathway to heaven is a pathway of holiness. Right here, he says he leads me in the righteousness he leads me in the right way. That means that we need to abstain from evil and the very appearance of evil. We need to live a holy life and be righteous. And the only way that you can do that is as you put yourself as a sheep and you follow the shepherd. You know the only thing that a sheep are good at? I told you they was a dumb animal. The only thing they're good at is following. That's it. That's the only thing that they're good at. It said the only thing they were good at is following. But even in the, she the sheep, even in the following, sometimes they get out there astray and want to see. They see something beautiful over there. They say, I'm going to go eat on that a while. They find themselves hung in the thorns and hung in the thickets. You know what they do? They begin to bah, begin to make that noise, and the shepherd hears it. And what does he do? He goes and he takes it and gets it out of the thorn and brings it back in. He brings it back in. He leads, restores my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Why does God want you to walk in righteousness? Why does he want you to live right and live a holy life? For his name's sake. We must realize that we're representing the Lord Jesus Christ. If you're representing him, he said, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. But he also said to the disciples, says, you are the light of the world. You need to let your light shine. So what he was saying is, he leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. A couple of years ago, I was reading this next scripture. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. We always use this when people are sick. We always use this at the cemetery, at the funeral home, at the hospital. But I want you to look at this, and I want to show you what the Lord showed me a couple years ago. He said, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Some of you today are walking in the valley of the shadow of death. It says, yeah, though I walk, that means that they're not dead. They're still alive. Yeah, they are walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Though I'm in the hospital, though I'm in the cemetery, though there's death all around me. He says, yeah, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Some of you today are walking through the valley. You're walking through the valley. 
But I want you to understand there, he said, walk through the valley. This is a process that you're going through. You don't understand what you're going through. You don't understand why you're in the reason that you're in the valley that you're in. But the thing that he's telling us is that walk through it. As long as you keep on walking, as long as you don't give up and you quit, as long as you keep on walking and you keep following that shepherd and you continue to let him lead you, though you don't understand the situation you're going through in your heart and your life, you must keep walking. You must keep walking. You must keep walking. You say, Pastor Rick, you don't know what I'm going through and I don't feel like walking, but you must keep walking. You must keep walking. You must keep walking. Remember the lepers and the Lord... Uh, the prophet told him to turn around and go. You know what happened? They begin to talk, walk. With every step that they took, they received healing. And what we must do in our heart and our life, the situation you're in, I don't know how come God burned this into my heart today. Some of you today are hurting. Some of you today are going through the valley. Some of you today feel like you're on the verge of death. Some of you feel like the Lord Jesus Christ is nowhere around you. That you're going through a hard time. You're going through a difficult time. But the thing I want you to know, it says, though I walk through the valley. God's going to get you through it. You keep on walking. You lift your head up. You don't give up. You keep following Jesus, following the shepherd, and let him lead you. And I promise you, he'll get you through to the other side. He'll get you through to the other side. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I want you to understand this. Watch it. I was reading this in the, one of the commentaries to, yesterday. And it amazed me, it shocked me. I never thought of it like this. What the Lord told me a couple years ago is that if you're in the cemetery and you're at the hospital and you're going through death, you're dead, you're not walking. The Lord told me, he said, this is for people that's alive, walking through the situations. They walk. But I was reading this, and then one of the commentaries, commentators said, watch this, it says, through the valley of the shadow of death. In order for there to be a shadow, there's got to be what? Light. It's a shadow of death. Some of you feel today that death is all around you. Spiritual death, physical death. Feel like there's sickness and all these things around you. But I want you to know today it's just a shadow of death. Because if you're following the Lord, you're following the shepherd, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. And if you're in that valley, you're through that cemetery, you're in that situation in the valley, just realize it's just a shadow of death. Why is it just a shadow of death? Because Jesus, when he died, before he rose, he went down into the pit of hell. And he went down and he took the key of death and hell and the grave. And he rose up victorious that we might have life and we might have it more abundantly. So why is it a shadow? Because for Christians, we don't need to be afraid of dying. We don't need to be afraid of the death because it's just a shadow. As long as you have the light with you, as long as you're following the Lamb, you're following the Shepherd, as long as you're following Him, the Great I Am, the, the Lord God Almighty, the Great Shepherd of the sheep, He has a light there for you. He says, I will fear no evil. Thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Watch this. The Shepherd uses the staff to hook them and bring them back. What does he use the rod for? I told you before a while ago that the sheep gets out and gets into the thicket. He brings them back. But you know what happened if he goes again? Listen to what the shepherd does. But this time it lets it ba and ba and ba. The shepherd hears it, but he doesn't do anything. He needs to teach him a lesson. He lets him ba and ba and ba. 
until he can't do it no more. He's cried out all he can cry out. What happens now? Now the shepherd goes to him. And he gets him out of the thicket. But this time, you know what he does? He doesn't take the staff around his neck and pull him out. He takes that rod and he hits one of his legs and he breaks it. Then he takes it and he joints it back together, pieces it back together. I want you to listen to me. Listen to this. He places it back together and he mends it. What does he do with that shepherd then? The sheep. He picks that sheep up. He carries it in his arm. Listen. Some of you have been straying and you strayed and you strayed and you strayed. You've been crying out to God and you say, where is he? God's trying to teach us a lesson. You cried and you cried and you cried and you say, I can't cry anymore. Sometimes he might be whipping you. He might be breaking you. But when he breaks you, he mends your leg back together. And he picks that little sheep up and he holds it into his arms and he carries it back to the camp. What does he do? He keeps that sheep by his arm, by his shoulder, to let him know that though you made a mistake, I love you. Though you made a mistake, I love you. And he holds him in his arms and he continues to hold him. The next couple days, the next week, until it, that leg gets mended back together, he holds that sheep in his arm until he gets better. And then what does he do? He puts it down. But you know what? That lamb has learned his lesson. He realized that I don't need to go out of the safety anymore. I don't need to go out into the world anymore to look for any food, to look for anything. Why? Because my shepherd loves me. He chastised me. He whipped me. He broke me. But what did he do? He took me and he held me in his arms. And he said, I love you. It's going to be okay. He loved him. So that when he got the better, you know what he did? He stayed right there close to that shepherd. He stayed right close to that shepherd. He knew the why. Because that, he knew that that shepherd loved him. He knew that the shepherd loved him. And he kept him there. Jesus is calling. Sister Cherry, come on to the piano. I'm not through, but I'm going to quit. Jesus is calling today. 
Won't you heed to his call? I don't care where you find yourself at today. You need to call unto him and let him heal you. Come unto me, all ye that are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Some of you have been dabbling in the world. Some of you haven't made any full commitment. Some of you maybe have drawn cold and weary. The Lord is telling us today, it's high time. That you make up your mind today that you're going to serve the Lord. Jesus is coming. His coming is very near. His coming is very near. You need to make yourself weary. You're weary and you're tired. You made mistakes. Jesus picks up that lamb holds it in his arms and mends it and takes care of it. I want you to know today that God loves you. You say, Pastor Rick, you don't know what I've done. You don't know the mistakes that I've made. But there's one thing I know is the good shepherd, the great shepherd, and laid his life down for you. And he loves you. He loves you. And he's pleading and he's asking for you to come unto me. Are you weary? Are you tired? Come unto me. Come unto me. Can we stand? These altars are open if you feel like you need to pray. The altars are open. You say, Pastor Rick, I need to pray. These altars are open. Come and find a place of prayer. Come and find a place to pray. You must realize today, God loves you more than anything. Maybe you made a mistake. Won't you come to these altars and pray? Weary, tired, come and pray. Find a place of prayer. Come to the altars, everyone that will. Come to the altars and pray. And call up unto Him and say, I am tired. I am weary. As King David saying, I realize that I need the shepherd. I need the shepherd in my heart. I need the shepherd in my life. I want to tell you again today. Listen to me. God loves you. He gave his life for you. More than anything. If you do not know him today. He loves you. He loves you. He loves you. Father God, I pray for every individual that's in this house right now. Father Lord, I don't know the valley situation that they're going through. I don't know the trial, don't know the temptation, but I know you. And there's light at the end of the tunnel. There's light through the valley. He said that he will never leave us or forsake us. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, in the name of Jesus. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? 
nothing but the blood of Jesus.